down. Getting too old for this crack. Okay, so 20 past 5. Uh, sunrises are starting to get a bit later in Queensland, but they'll never really go past, I think, like 6.30, 7 might be the latest one, I think 6.30, because they don't have daylight savings here. But I'm at a place called Malney. Um, it's famous for this lone tree shot on a hill that once upon a time was open to the public. It's not now, because of... Oh, what usually happens, people coming here very popular for weddings and stuff and just leaving the land not as they found it but um, you can still shoot the tree from the roadside but I'm actually at another tree which is a bit more interesting to my eye and it, it curves almost 90 degrees very cool looking tree in the background you've got the Glasshouse Mountains and stuff so I'm here to shoot that past the side of the road um, sun is rising in 30 minutes it's going to be one of those shots where I think the best of it will be when the sun comes up because there's lots of low cloud but there's still some nice I've found over here even with a bit of low cloud and stuff there's still contrast and colour in the sky um, when the sun comes up so often we have that best pre sunrise glow at home um, or not at home all over the world <laughs> uh, before the sunrise if you have low cloud then it's best to stick it on until after the sun comes up because then you'll get a bit of contrast in the sky. It's going to be a very easy, straightforward shot. I'm going to use my 24 to 120 lens, which I use majority of the time. And I'm going to just frame up the tree with the mountains in the background. And uh, I'm shooting, obviously, directly in front of the tree. The sun is rising to the left of it, so the light should be hopefully streaming in from the left hand side and we might get some nice contrast in the sky. I really wanted to fly the drone up here, but it's a residential area, I'm not sure how kindly they take the drones being flown on at 6 a.m. on Easter morning. So look conditions are ideal but I wanted to I'm not often in this part of the country and I love the Glasshouse Mountains and this whole area. I think it's the one of the coolest areas I've seen so far in Queensland if not Australia so yeah I'm gonna give it another 10 minutes before I go out and see what happens it's pretty cool it's literally just a street inside the road mad. Don't want to talk too loudly because I'm right beside someone's house but below me I can see the glass house mountains, I can see a bit of kind of low lying cloud fog. Yeah it looks really cool. This is very nice. There's just a glow coming from the left hand side um, where the sky is lighting up. Obviously you've got some low cloud blocking it but still some lovely contrast in the sky I'm I'm framing up the shot at about 50 millimeters and it's kind of a case of trying to get the mountain frame correctly under the, the low line branch I'm not sure which looks best really I'd love to head into the, if I headed into the field I'd be able to get like the mountain underneath the branch but obviously I'm not going to trespass. You know, there's no signs but ah, I'm still not going to do it. It still looks pretty cool from where this is. Do you know what? This is why I love, love sunrise. You are mostly alone. But on Australia it's a bit different. And those birds are called kookaburras and they're known because it sounds like they're cackling <sighs> and they're always up in the mornings early. That's very, very nice. Focusing on the tree. 
I think I'm going to have to do a bit of a focus stack here because I'm going to have to focus on the tree and I'm going to have to focus on the background. So I'm going to stop down to F11 and I'm going to put, I'm going to take one shot where I focus on the tree. The shadow recovery on the Nikons is quite good so I kind of shoot if I'm not bracketing. I more so aim for preventing exposed highlights uh, or overexposed highlights. Whereas on some cameras, if your camera is more prone to noisy shadows, like if you shoot in Canon, they have very noisy shadows if you raise them, from what I've seen. Canon shooters don't jump into the comments and berate me. But then maybe shoot more towards printing your shadows from being too dark, you know. And now I'm gonna focus on the background of the image and I'll take a shot. Okay, so about 10 minutes or so to sunrise. Um, very happy so far. If I don't get any more, I'd be, I honestly wouldn't mind. But I do think this is kind of like, so as I've said, when you have these low cloud, uh, these low cloud conditions, you can, there's like two stages of the morning. You can have that pre-dawn where you might get some nice contrast in the sky, you might get some nice color. But the best is after when the sun comes up and you just get a bit of light shaft through because there is a gap above the low cloud. So when the sun comes up above that, the light will shine from the left hand side. I'm just worried that by the time that happens, it might be a bit harsh. The only thing about, that's the only thing I notice about here is the sun, like in Ireland, you've got that lovely low winter sun. Um, over here, you don't really have that. It gets darker, it gets bright very quick, even in winter. So it's, uh, it's interesting, but yeah, the mountains that I'm looking at in front of me are the ones that you would have seen in the last video that I shot from Mount Gungun. Um, I'm obviously a different side of them now, but where you can see that the mountain kind of crisscrossing, so. Yeah, the Glasshouse Mountains are absolutely stunning. I'm gonna give this, I go on. I might pick my bag up off the ground because you just wouldn't know what's going into it. That's not bad actually, that's not bad. I have to find in an angle where I can frame the, the mountain with the tree. Fantastic colour all around me. Um, not really where the tree is, but it's just a bit on the horizon. Still, what an absolutely incredible scene. It's so busy though, not busy as in, like, I'm the only photographer here, but so many, like, people walking and cycling and driving past at home in Ireland at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning you'll be lucky to meet someone really it's just a bit different I suppose which isn't a bad thing but it's nice sometimes to have the place completely to yourself which I have I'm very happy I got the angle of the tree framing it so 
I and mean, then I'm just shooting at 50 mil. It's the most, it's, it reminds me of the shot in the Dolomites of the church in Santa Magdalena. It's so straightforward. You could strap your camera to a dog and send him running down through the valley and he'd still get a good photo. It's just such a picture perfect scene. Like I'm shooting at oh, like 50, 60 mil. I saw 100 F11 and just take the shot. Not sure what to do really. The only problem with the other tree is parking is not great. Um, but I'd love to try and get to like a viewpoint where I could look down to the valley and pick out some shots. I also wouldn't mind if I got a bit of light on this tree. But this, that could be another 20 minutes. And I'm a bit caught for time. So, I, okay, the clouds are starting to light there, and I'd like to kind of, there's some lovely formations of clouds, so I'm going to grab one more shot here. Well, I've got a nice sky behind this tree, and we can work with that. And if that's all I get this morning, then happy it is. Alright, let's be a bit frantic now, but I'm just having to see an easily accessible viewpoint where I might be able to pick out a nice composition with a long lens um, that I don't have. By long lens, I mean 120mm. <laughs> is just starting to hit the valley now. Okay, this is probably my last bit of recording for this morning. But what a cool looking viewpoint up here. And I'm actually shooting a panel of the mountains. Horizontal panel, 120 mil. I'm all out at 120 mil because I don't have a longer focal length, but the fog in the valley, and oh wow, it looks absolutely incredible. It's a horizontal panel, which it, sometimes they don't stitch great. Okay, before my battery dies, top tip for your panels. At the very start of your panel, put your hand in front of the lens, take a black exposure. At the very end of the panel, take a black exposure. Helps see in Lightroom. Um, you'll know the start and the end of your panel basically in Lightroom. That's what I'm trying to say. Alright. I'm gonna enjoy my morning shooting and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll show you this panel if it works out at the end. All the best.